Hello YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla electric car video with me, Adam Well Informed. When do electric cars become more expensive to fully recharge than refueling a petrol counterpart? With the cost of living crisis in the UK and around the world, energy prices form a big part of that big jump in the cost of living. Some nations are weathering the storm better than others, but that made me think, should I be worried as an electric car user? After all, my car only uses electricity as its go-go juice. In the UK, the media has been publishing article after article about how electricity prices are predicted to jump another 40% in October 2022, after it's already jumped 50% in April. But at what point will charging my Tesla Model 3 become more expensive than at the petrol pump? In a petrol car, of course. Adding fuel to a Tesla is something I'll leave up to rich rebuilds. But let's not forget, we've already witnessed the prices at the pump increasing tremendously too. All-time highs in fact. But what happens if we've seen the petrol highs and it's dropped further? When is cost parity then? Plus my most comforting solution to the ever-increasing electricity prices. And this is what I channel when I want to reassure myself of the ever-increasing electricity prices. So whether you're an EV owner now or a future owner looking for some reassurance about electric car ownership, this video has something for you because I've crunched the numbers just so you don't have to. That said, before we get into it, don't forget to hit that like button to show me some of your virtual love and support for Tesla and EV content. Hit the subscribe button to follow my Tesla EV journey with me. And finally, hit the notification bell so you're notified of all my upcoming electric car videos as soon as they're available. Right, let's get into the thick of it, I think. So to kick things off, let's look at how the cost economics of electric cars and petrol cars stand today, just to give us a foundation. To make things fair and more representative to everyone, I've not picked a direct suitable alternative to the Tesla Model 3. If you've seen some of my previous videos, I tend to pick the BMW 3 Series as a direct competitor. After all, they're in the same market as each other. It's a solid competitor to use, but I thought it would be way better to use an all-round industry average figure. So in August 2022, the RAC Foundation found the average price of petrol at 179.8 pence per litre, and the UK average MPG for a petrol car in 2020 was 52.6 miles per gallon. Because we pay for fuel in litres and we measure efficiency in imperial terms, we need to modernise it for our calculations. So this 52.6 miles per gallon figure, figure works out to be 11.57 miles per litre of fuel. And to back up my figures, here's a little screenshot of my personal collection of feet. I mean, calculations. Sorry, slip of the tongue there. Seriously, Adam, you've got to do better than that. Your humour is getting worse. Yeah, I should probably remove this segment. Anyhow, at £1.80 per litre and an average fuel tank of 50 litres, we're going to pay around £90 for 578.5 miles. Therefore, on average, we're paying 15.6 pence per mile in the average petrol car, just paying for the average cost of fuel today, according to the RAC. For my Tesla Model 3, instead of using my own EV tariff, more on that later, I've used the current price cap of 28 pence per kilowatt hour of electricity charged to domestic customers. So if you are charging from home and you are on a standard variable rate in August 2022, this should be the price you'll be paying in line with the price cap implemented by Ofgem. I will talk about public rapid charging after this segment so we get a wide spectrum of results, which is going to be extremely important and it's a really interesting comparison for sure. Anyhow, I have a 2021 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus and to those that are familiar with Teslas, it is not the LFP Model 3 that you can buy today directly from the Tesla website. So I have a slightly smaller battery pack than today's model. To make this easier for non-EV users, essentially to fully recharge my car, it has a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack. Therefore, to fully recharge this at the standard rate, it would cost me 14 pounds exactly. We're simply just timesing the unit cost of 28 pence by the 50 kilowatt hour capacity to get that sum. Anyhow, using my own lifetime efficiency figure, which I believe could be better, for a magnitude of different reasons, it currently stands at 236 watt hour miles as shown on the screen. For those new to EVs, for every one mile I drive, it uses 236 watt hours of energy to complete a mile from the battery pack, and I have a total of 50,000 watt hours, also known as 50 kilowatt hours. Naturally, 
the lower that energy efficiency rate is, the more miles you do actually achieve with those 50,000 watts of capacity that you have at your disposal. Anyhow, getting back to the calculations, I make this 211 miles per full charge at that personalized efficiency rate at the cost of six pence per mile. So immediately using these figures, we've calculated it costs 2.5 times more per mile, and that's over 15 pence per mile for the petrol car and six pence for the electric car. At this point, I can already hear the keyboard warriors prepping their comments to say the range is more with the petrol car, but we're not looking at range today, are we? And if we were, I'd assure the audience that 99% of car journeys are under 100 miles in England, according to this government bat statistic. So the information provided would cover 99% of journeys and circumstances here in England. But for the purpose of doubt, and um, maybe you're based elsewhere, I will cover rapid charging costs and how that does compare to filling up at the pump. So let's simulate just public charging versus those petrol costs we've just generated, and then we'll look at how the predicted home electricity prices are predicted to skyrocket, and we can see if that changes the status quo. Again, using ROC as my source, they detailed at the end of May, the average rapid charging cost was 44 Five, five pence per kilowatt hour and keeping everything else the same the cost per mile obviously increases due to the sheer difference in the unit costs being between the home and rapid charging but despite the increase in charging costs the petrol car still costs five pence more per mile than my car being rapid charged at that price so even if we took range into account it's still going to cost much less to achieve that 578 miles figure of the petrol car so bigger is not always better and as of today electric cars are cheaper to charge from home or rapid charging away from home but adam petrol prices could drop further than your petrol benchmark and that's absolutely true i mean i'm no mystic meg harry potter magic mike whatever you want to call me i'm just your average british dad and i'd probably give you one of those awkward gentle nods if we've got eye contact so my future predictions carry no weight whatsoever. And if we simulate a 30 pence drop down to £1.50 per litre, what do the state of affairs look at that point? Well, naturally, all things being equal, the price for the full tank drops from £90 to £75, and the price per mile drops from 15.6 pence to 13 pence. And it's still more than double the current home charging situation at 6.6 .6 pence per mile and almost 30% more than the rapid charger only situation. So it does fare better, but it's still a loser in both situations. Whilst I have just simulated a 30 pence drop, as we know, fossil fuel pricing can be extremely volatile. And as we are witnessing in 2022, no one knows the true direction it can go. So if it can go down, it can go up. And I remind my wife of that from time to time. But to round this petrol benchmark off, what happens if it accelerates to the two pound per litre mark? That tank will then cost 100 pounds to fill, meaning a cost per mile of 17 pence, which is eye-watering to say at least. But when does electricity have cost parity with petrol refueling and how badly will the predicted changes to the uk electric cost cap in winter 2022 affect the cost economics of the argument well let's be honest it isn't going to be great in fact it's eye-watering compared to historical prices and according to this article by nimble fins the predicted cap for october 2022 will result in a new standard variable cost cap 46.7 pence per kilowatt hour compared to 28 pence at present so apart from the horrendous jump in the unit price and subsequent home usage how will that affect ev charging well a full charge will increase from 14 pounds to 23 pounds and 35 pence resulting in a new cost per mile figure of 11 pence compared to 6.6 .6 pence before yet still lower than today's petrol current cost per mile of 15.6 pence and even if petrol falls back to £1.50 it's still lower than the 13 pence in that situation. Okay Adam, I think your point is becoming clear that despite electricity increases the cost per mile is still cheaper in an EV but where is the tipping point and how does that compare to January 2023's cost cap comparisons and is there any way to combat the increase in home charging costs? 
If we stuck at today's price of £1.80 and a cost per mile of 15.6 pence, I make the electricity cost of 66 pence per kilowatt hour being that tipping point of where there is cost parity. However, this is only definitive within the factors of the calculation. And by that, I mean, if you drive more efficiently in either vehicle, that would have an effect on the outcome as just one example. However, with my framework and simulation, that would be the tipping point. We know the prices for both electricity and fuel will fluctuate and so the goalposts for both teams are moving all the time. Therefore, in reality, cost parity is a moving target. I still think this adds value for comparison into how electricity costs stand against petrol prices in today's money. That said, this does leave us with one more prediction and that's January 2023. If predictions again are true, it's going to be even higher than October's 22's predicted price. This time, money saving expert stipulates a gain of 8%. However, their October 2022 prediction was slightly lower than the one I used before. Therefore, if we anticipate around an 8% gain in January 2023, and we are charged 50 pence per kilowatt hour on that standard variable rate, recharging my Tesla Model 3 would increase to £25 exactly. The cost per mile would then be 11.8 pence per mile compared to October's figure of 11 pence per mile flat. So the price per mile for charging between October and January isn't significant at all. However, whether you're currently driving a petrol car or an electric car, I for one only hope that the costs of both electricity and fuel decrease further because ultimately these costs feed into the cost of living for everyone. Finally, before we conclude matters, I have to tell you that one difference you could implement from home to help ensure your EV charging costs stay low, that is getting yourself on an EV friendly tariff like myself. Different providers do offer this type of tariff, however it is more complex than a normal standard variable rate tariff. So take my word merely as a direction that it is available on the market today. As there are different variables that could make this more expensive, it's all dependent on your personal circumstances. And let's face it, no one wants to hear me run through a thousand different scenarios. So do your own research as to whether the overall outcome is going to be better for you. The beauty of the EV tariff means you can get a super cheap electricity rate simply by utilizing electricity at a nominated non-peak time, because this is when electricity demand is at its lowest. So for example, I'm on the Octopus Go tariff myself if I was to sign up today as a newcomer, in my area at least, I would be charged 39.35 pence per kilowatt hour of electricity, but only during the hours of 4.30 a.m. up to 12.30 a.m. However, between the hours of 12.30 a.m. and 4.30 a.m., I have a cheeky four-hour slot to recharge my electric car at just 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. So what does that mean? Well, compared to today's standard variable rate of 28 pence per kilowatt hour, my total recharge costs will go from 14 pounds to just 3 pounds 75 for a full charge or 1.8 pence per mile compared to the 6.6 .6 pence before. This is significantly cheaper than the 15.6 pence per mile of petrol today. And to your surprise, this tariff is available today. Even during this period of sky high electricity prices, one thing you must take note on is that the higher peak pricing for the other 20 hours of the day are going to be 39.35 pence per kilowatt hour. This is higher than the standard variable rate today of 28 pence as it is not subject to the price cap. And this is why I did mention earlier that you have to actually look into it yourself for your own situation just to assess if it's worth switching with your household consumption in mind. Contrary to that, it's also worth noting that you can use other appliances during that non-peak time, such as your dishwasher or maybe your dryer. But ultimately, we can't compare one household to another easily. But hopefully, this just gives you an idea of how you could reduce your EV charging situation just by utilizing them EV-friendly tariffs. It's not just Octopus Energy that offers these small EV tariffs. There are other providers. However, if you want to switch to Octopus, it may be beneficial for you if you use my referral link in the description of the video. It's also important to mention that there are some requirements to gain access to such a tariff. For example, you may need a EV, 
and usually a smart meter to qualify for such a tariff. If you're missing a smart meter, you will need to request one to be installed before you can actually gain access to this tariff. So there we have it folks. We know both fossil fuels and electricity can see their prices increase and ultimately it will ripple into your cost of transportation. Because based on these figures, despite predicted increases in electricity prices, this will not mean there will be cost parity with petrol costs. Well, at least in these situations, that is. If you have access to solar or wind power, you can effectively generate your own power for your vehicle. However, it's fair to say not everyone has the financial resource to do so. But it is ultimately a hack to achieving free energy in a way. Yes, there is financial resource required to pay for such a system, but after that payback has occurred, that energy generated afterwards is pretty much free electricity and you can utilize that for your EV. That said, EV tariffs are much more accessible without that initial upfront payment of solar installation. If the sums work for you, this should keep your home charging costs low as can be until hopefully we see the whole electricity market move back to a more historical level. So what did you guys think to the video? Did the cost parity figure surprise you? Do you think the price of fuel will ever drop back again? And if you're not sure what to comment, you can simply comment, not quite 69 pence, and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for the support. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit the like button, share the video with your friends and family, or any other group that you think will find it beneficial. That's it from me this week, folks. I've got some more great informative videos on the way for you, so stay tuned, and thanks for watching. Ciao.